What's going on you guys? Kenny here, also known as Solid Fan 85. Um, this is a vlog about something I've been trying to remember the last couple of hours uh, about an event in my life that impacted me, although I didn't really realize it at the time. But thinking back about it after just watching something, I'll try to explain. Let me get the quick details out first and foremost. Um, I met Passerby. Passerby back in 2003-2004 was a band that became later on known as Flyleaf, uh, who was um, co-founded by Lacey Sturm. Uh, Lacey Sturm ended up leaving Flyleaf um, a few years ago as of this recording. And, um, well, probably more than a few years ago. Honestly, I, I, I didn't keep up. I didn't keep up with Flyleaf uh, for the, the past while. Uh, but I was I was a big fan of Passerby back in the day. The reason being is because I was actually very privileged to be a part of a Rained Out concert uh, years ago. Again, I want to say 2003, 2004. Uh, my, f my father had actually been tasked with bringing in local, or well, Texas bands uh, for Christian events. And Passerby had been one of those bands, as well as a, another band at the time, whom I unfortunately forget the name of at the moment. But I remember this concert because it was supposed to be a fairly big deal for the local community. But unfortunately, there was a very heavy rainstorm that night. This was at a pavilion setting. It was a wide open, covered, um, but it was just me. Uh, some of my siblings, my father, my stepmother, and a couple other people. It was a very, very small crowd. But I remember hearing Pastor By and meeting the band. And I remember I was the only... I, I got into the music so much. I'm one of those people that I literally jump up and down at a concert. I get rowdy. I, make, I get excited. Especially at concerts like that, especially back then, I had to have been probably 17, 18 years old. I was still um, a child of faith back then, as some people would put it. Uh, I was fairly religious. I'm not nowadays, but back then I definitely was, being as a child of a coming from pastors and preachers and evangelists. Um, but I remember meeting Lacey, and I remember thinking, wow, this gal is short, you know. Because, you know, 17, 18, and she was actually really pretty. And, uh, I, of course, there were other members of the bands as well. Um, but uh, Lacey stood out to me the most, you know. Because, again, I was at that age. I was looking at girls. And, um, but there was something about her. There was something about her I didn't know at the time that felt... Like something had happened. And I didn't know a whole lot about the band back then. I was uh, introduced to the band at that concert. I didn't know a whole lot about them. I actually, unfortunately, uh, I had a signed album. I uh, was able to get that from them. Over the years, though, I've moved so much. I've lost it. <laughs> I regret that, honestly. But it happened. But in, in, in a recent video I watched in a fact or fiction... Uh, with Lacey Sturm. She mentioned around that time in her life, or around earlier years in her life, she uh, had thought about committing suicide. She uh, was in that in that state in her life where she was just going to go home and end it while uh, she was at, a, at church. Um, and somebody had stopped her on the way out of uh, that church was telling her things that they shouldn't have known. But as it goes with faith, uh, this person had told her that God you know, wanted me to talk to you. And details were coming up. Uh, I forget the gentleman's name, but he saved her life uh, because of you know, God speaking through him. And um, I mention that because I had, an, I had a suicidal episode myself. Uh, I've gone over this on the channel off and on throughout the years, but my wife saved my life. 
because she picked up the phone. I was going to end my life with a bottle of pills. Uh, I had been bi diagnosed bipolar a few weeks before, uh, or actually, a few, I'm sorry, a few days after. But a few weeks before that, there was a tragic event. Um, I lost somebody. Uh, I had a flood of memories come back uh, from childhood abuse. It was a very dark time in my life. And hearing her the details about the event she went through, there was also an event in my life that happened at church that was very similar. It was at my grandparents' church. And it's always stuck with me, but there was a lady that was a friend of my grandmother's that I had spoken with. She told me, she said, you're about to go through a storm in your life. This is going to be a very long storm. But you are strong enough to handle it. Now, I know that sounds vague. A lot of people would say, well, you know, you could, you could say that about anything in life. But for some reason, that moment always stuck with me. This was at a very young age. This was probably 13, 14 years old. And I bring that up is because when you are a kid in faith, when you're constantly dragged to church, when you are, for lack of a better word, forced to sit through preaching and songs and everything, there are moments that you remember, and that was one of mine. And in ways, it stuck with me, and it changed my life. For the positive or the negative, I can I can never really say, but it was one of those moments of meeting Lacey Sturm, of meeting Passerby, of being at that concert that was rained out, that hearing their music, jumping to their rhythm, I mean, it was insane, and that's always stuck with me. And I've never really talked about it because that part of my life, I... I kind of blocked out a lot because I had been I had been going through a lot then. But I'd always remembered that concert. I'd always remembered the Passerby band. I'd always remembered Lacey Sturm. And there had to be a reason. And I think it's because she went through before I'd met her. She went through something that I would go through later in life. And like I said, nowadays I'm not religious. But the universe does sometimes link people in a way. I'm not saying like I'm linked to Lacey Sturm, but that event in my life that she had been a part of in the universal state of things had had an impact on me at an age and had been become a link in the series of events in my life that is relatable. And it's such an awesome memory to me. It always will be. Um, and I just remember after the concert, talking with the band. I actually got to meet them. And it, there are just a couple of key moments that stand out to me. One is the concert itself in general. I remember the energy. Even though there was rain pouring down, there was a storm going left and right. These guys were in a van <clears throat> at the time. I remember them unpacking the equipment, loading the equipment. But after the concert, they I remember Lacey kind of, not directly at me, but she was talking with somebody, I think it was one of my siblings or something, saying that uh, they remember that it, just, it was such a small concert, but the energy of seeing uh, that guy jumping up and down, which was me, uh, really kind of was awesome. And it's why they do it, you know, even though it was such a rained out concert. It was just, it was a hell of a thing. It was a hell of an event in my life. And it's weird. I, I haven't really thought about Flyleaf throughout the years uh, a whole lot. I mean, again, I remember Passerby. I remember them being, uh, changing into Flyleaf. My father throughout the years, again, the one that organized the event. Um, I never really brought it up because I always felt that the concert might have been a disappointment for him because he worked so hard on public relations for it, on getting the word out and everything, and only to have the whole thing rained out. But that had all been done, and I was able to attend. And that moment stuck with me throughout my life. It's been a very good moment in my life. There's been a lot of darkness in my life, but 
that was one of the lighter moments where Passerby was still at that point on tour. They've been on tour for a couple of years before they became Flyleaf and got signed. Uh, or, you know, had a big event, a really big breakout kind of thing. Um, and it'll always be just such an awesome memory. And it's really cool to feel that this person I met um, had had an event in their life that would I would later go on to have in mine. That would be an awakening. That would be a great darkness on me, but would also be an awakening. This is such a crazy thing. Anyway, I wanted to share this story. Um, I know people might find this weird, but hey, it's my you know it's my vlogs. Um, you know, ever since then, I've again in the in the in recent years, in the last eight nine years. Uh, it, I've only ever heard Flyleaf. I, you know, I heard Lacey left the band. Just brief details here and there, and never really why. But um, just watching that interview and hearing her story, it kind of came flooding back. I wish I could remember the name of the town we were in. It was just a pavilion uh, in East Texas that had been rained out around 2002, 2003. And I don't know if she ever remembers that. I don't know if any of the bands ever remember it, but I definitely remember them. And it's just such a fantastic memory. And I'm really glad to see Lacey doing doing well nowadays as of uh, this recording. She had a son and probably has another kid for all I know. But it'll always be a great memory for me. So anyway, I just want to share this with you guys. A bit long-winded, but... Uh, there was a lot to unpack. And there was a lot to, you know, in detail and showing similarities between what um, somebody that I met at a young age that had an impact on me went through that I would go through later in life. And um, it's just those things that really hit you. And I've, for all the darkness of my life, I have led a heck of an interesting life. I, I am privileged in a lot of ways. And I will always be thankful for that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Remember, you're awesome. Never let the world tell you otherwise. See you.